Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. Today I'll be going through a number of techniques you can apply to speed up the performance of your Windows 10 without using any third-party software. Performance improvements can be seen from a decrease in boot time to quicker application launch, smoother graphics and overall speed up of your Windows operations. Now let's get the most obvious techniques out of the way. First is replacing a mechanical hard drive with an SSD. This is likely the most effective way to experience a significant boost in the overall speed and performance of your Windows. And if your PC supports the NVMe technology, then using the M.2 NVMe SSD will dramatically boost your Windows performance even further. Another obvious technique is throwing in a couple more gigabytes of RAM. Now this can also make a noticeable difference in your Windows speed. However, other than such hardware-related solutions, there are several other software-based solutions that can significantly improve the overall speed and performance of your Windows. Some techniques will produce more obvious results if you have been running your Windows over a longer period of time, like for many months or years, than say if you just recently installed your Windows 10. But in any case, it doesn't hurt to implement these techniques at any point in time, and you can always repeat them over time, especially if you begin to experience any lags in your Windows operations. Now before we proceed, if you are yet to subscribe, do take a moment and hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so as to keep up with the future tech support videos on the channel. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so here I'm using the latest version of Windows 10 at the time of making this video, which is the 1909 build. If you are yet to update your Windows to the latest version at the time you are watching this tutorial, then I will suggest doing so because Microsoft understands that users want their Windows running as fast as possible. As such, they are constantly working on new techniques to improve body speed and overall user experience. These improvements are offered in the form of updates and with larger updates, you have a whole new build, which is normally released a couple of times a year. They could be buggy at times, but the idea is to roll out the latest developments and improvements in Windows. You could delay your updates for a couple of weeks if you want to verify that it's error free. But as much as possible, do keep your windows updated so as to benefit from these latest features and improvements. With that out of the way, the first technique would be to disable all unnecessary startup programs. To do that, press the keyboard combination, Control shift escape to go to your task manager, or simply right click an empty space on the taskbar and select task manager from the list. With the task manager open, click on the startup tab, here you should see a list of all programs that start up automatically when you boot up your Windows. So here you have the names of the programs, the publishers, the status, and then the startup impact. By default, all the programs on this list are enabled. So the two key parameters to look out for would be the publisher and the startup impacts. This is important because sometimes you might find programs you haven't installed on this list, so you won't know for sure how relevant they might be. One way to verify would be to do a quick search on Google. Another way would be to check the publisher. Usually I wouldn't disable programs from Microsoft Corporation except if I'm sure of what the program does and I'm sure I don't need it during startup. This is because some other programs might have some dependency on them, so disabling them might cause other programs to malfunction. Here as you can see, I have 5 of such startup programs from Microsoft and the startup impacts which is a measure of how much resources they use during startup are mostly high. Here in my case, I don't use the Microsoft OneDrive, at least not on startup, so I will disable it. To do that, I will simply click on it and then click on disable button on the right corner. You can also right click and select disable from the options. So here you can check and disable all other unwanted programs, especially those with high startup impacts. This is a very important technique for speeding up your system because some of these programs have several other sub-processes running under them. So disabling them will definitely save your computer some startup resources and speeding up the startup process. With that, the second technique would be to disable unwanted runtime services. To do that, go to your Windows search and type System Configuration. Then, click on System Configuration from the search results. On this System Configurations window, click on Services. Here you would see a list of all your system services, the manufacturers as well as the status of each service. Here again, I wouldn't want to tamper with Microsoft services. Windows has made it easy to avoid this mistake, so by clicking on hide all Microsoft services, you will be left with only the other services and then you can check to see if they are actually useful to you or not. You can use this enable all or disable all buttons to enable or disable all the services. To disable specific services, you can simply uncheck them.
then hit apply for the changes to take effect. Now on hitting OK, it will prompt you to restart your PC. You can save your work and click on restart to complete the process. The third technique is to adjust your power settings. To do that, go to your Windows search and type power and sleep settings. Click on power and sleep settings from the search results. It should take you to this power and sleep settings page. On the right side of the page under related settings, click on additional power settings. And that should take you to this page where you can customize your power plan. If you have yours set to balanced mode, then you might want to change it to high performance. If you don't see it here, then you can click on this drop down to reveal other options. Of course, the high performance plan will put a bit more demand on your power usage, but this additional power will be channeled towards improving the overall performance of your windows. The next technique is to uninstall all unwanted programs. Now, this goes without saying. Often you will find installed on your system programs and apps you don't even remember installing. And such apps not only occupy unnecessary disk space, they sometimes run some background processes that could be slowing down your windows. To identify such programs, go to your start menu and click on the gear icon to open up your Windows settings. On this page, click on apps and it should take you to this apps and features settings page. Here you should see a list of all the programs you have currently installed on your PC. If you check through this list, more than likely you would find a number of programs you don't remember installing or programs you simply don't use again. Click on such unwanted programs to select them and then click on uninstall to remove them. Remember to wait for each program to finish uninstalling before trying to uninstall another one. Moving on to the next technique which is disabling all unnecessary or unused Windows settings. To do that, go to your start menu and click on the gear icon to open your settings. Now most of the settings you would find here are usually turned on by default, yet most of them are rarely needed by users. To reclaim the resources used up by these settings, you will need to identify the unused ones and manually turn them off. So let's begin with privacy. Under the general settings, here you will see these different options. Some of these you might have turned off during Windows installation. If not, then you might want to turn off all these options, except if for some particular reason you want to have any of them turned on. Now for feedback and diagnostics, you want to select basic. With that, only necessary diagnostic data gets sent across. You can also turn off tailored experience and then scroll down to feedback frequency and set it to never if you don't want to send Microsoft any feedbacks. Next, move to the location and turn off allow apps to access your location. You can also disable the location service for the device entirely by clicking on this change button and then turn off location access. Next, move to the camera and then disable camera for all apps that you don't need camera on. Same also goes for the microphone as well as all the other services. So here under voice activation, I will turn off these two settings since I never use them. I'll do same for notifications, account information, contacts, calendar, then call history, email, and radius. Next is the background apps. Here you can disable all background apps you don't use and leave only the necessary ones. Afterwards, go back to the settings page and click on system. And then under notification and actions, you can uncheck these four additional notification options. Then scroll down further and disable other unnecessary notifications for specific applications. Here you can also turn off the settings under tablet mode if you don't use it. With that, the next technique is to turn on the fast startup utility. Now this is mostly applicable if you're experiencing unusual delays when starting up your windows after a shutdown. To turn on the fast startup utility, open your power and sleep settings once again. On this page, click on additional power settings on the right and then the power option settings page should pop up. Here click on choose what the power button does. Then on the page that follows, click on change settings that are currently unavailable. Here ensure that the turn on fast startup is enabled. If not, 
click to turn it on and then save changes. The next technique is to disable ULPS feature using the registry editor. Now this is applicable only if you are using an AMD GPU with multi-GPU crossfire configuration. ULPS is short for ultra low power state. With this feature enabled, Windows will turn off the second GPU when it isn't in use. However, for some chipsets and processors, this could become a problem. A typical sign of this problem is an unusual delay during Windows startup or a prolonged black screen on startup. To disable the ULPS feature, go to your Windows search and type Reg Edit as shown on the screen and click on Reg Edit from the search results. Now that should take you to the registry editor. On this page, use the keyboard combination Ctrl F to open the Find dialog box. Here type in Enable ULPS as shown on the screen. Hit enter and wait for the search results to come up. Now if you don't have an AMD GPU, you may not see this file from your search results, in which case you should proceed to the next technique. If you have the Enable ULPS on your search results, double click on it. Here change the value data to zero. Hit OK and close the registry editor. Next, you want to delete all unnecessary files from your PC. To do that, you go to your search and type run. Then click on the run app from the search results. On the run search box, type percentage temp percentage as shown on the screen and hit enter. Now this will show you the temporary files from your applications. So here select all the files in this folder. Right click and select delete to remove these files. Now if some files can be deleted, just skip them and continue with the process. Next, go back to the run and type temp, then hit enter. Now this will show Windows temporary files. Again, here select all the files and hit delete to remove them. Now go back to the run once again and type prefetch and hit enter. Here again select all the files in this folder and hit delete to remove them. The next technique is to perform a disk cleanup. To do that go to your search and type disk cleanup. Click on the disk cleanup app from the search results. Here ensure your C drive is selected, then hit OK. Wait for the cleanup utility to run for some time. Here it should say how much space you can free up. First go through the list of files and folders, and then select all unwanted ones and hit OK. Here I will select delete these files and wait for the process to complete. Now if afterwards you don't recover the full disk space earlier analyzed to be recoverable, then you should run this process multiple times till you see a corresponding amount of disk space recovered. With that, the next technique is to defragment and optimize your disk. This is only applicable to mechanical hard disks. If you are using an SSD, then you can just skip this step and move to the next. Disk defragmentation basically assembles your file fragments back together as a single unit, thereby enabling faster access to such files. To defragment your disk, simply go to your Windows search and type defrag. Click on defragment and optimize drive from the search results. You should have a window like this pop up. Here you should select the drive where you installed your Windows, which is usually the C drive. So select the C drive and click on optimize. Now I won't be doing this here since I'm using an SSD. If you have a mechanical hard drive, then you can click on optimize and then wait for the optimization process to run. Afterwards, simply close the window and then restart your PC. With that, the next technique would be to change some personalized settings. To do that, simply right click on your desktop and then select personalize from the options. Here, go down to start and then turn off all unnecessary settings. And that is it for this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions, feedbacks or some other ideas to speed up your windows that wasn't covered in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for updates on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.